welcome to another session of the Profile Show. And it's with me, your host, Nenema Teboche. Um, today on this session, we are with no other person than one of the biggest boxers in Ghana who was brought up in Chopo. He has been fighting boxing since he was a child. He has won a lot of titles for the Mother Africa and Ghana. He's very known both internationally and locally. But before I introduce our guest formally on the show, let's go for a short commercial break. guest for today has fought 44 fights. He has had four losses, 28 knockouts and 30 by points. He is the former welterweight national division champion of Ghana. He's won the WBC silver welterweight title. He's the WBA, former WBO African super welterweight champion and also a former world challenger. He's nobody than our own Patrick Aluti. Welcome Patrick. Patrick, um, if we may get to know, I want viewers to know a little bit about you. So where did you start your boxing and how come you had a passion for this sport? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express myself a little bit. I would like to uh, say that I started boxing, uh, I think, when I was uh, 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I did not start it when I was 10 years here in uh, Wisdom Boxing, but I started it from home before coming. Uh, someone introduced me to uh, the one and only Kuchasari okay. in Ghana. Yeah. Um, I, I started boxing at home uh, because my grandpa sometimes used to uh, wear me a head guard. I hope you know what guy, uh, guy means. Yeah. And also, uh, gloves, one hand okay. gloves. Head guard is the best guy. Watch the boxes well. Yeah, head when you have boxes. Yeah. Okay. And so I took it from there. As my grandpa started uh, wearing me a guard and wearing me gloves, like I said. Um, uh, I, uh, when my grandpa started doing that, I did not know what he was trying to. Uh, tell me or what he's trying to do because I was a kid um, and I don't know what is called uh, boxing. Yeah. So I also accept what, what he, he always tried to do and uh, I think growing up, I think my um, uh, getting to my 12, 13 years, uh, I started to know what is called boxing. And at that time my father also used to take me when, whenever my Tyson is going to fight. So I started following, from there I started following boxing. Uh, my father took me to a man who also is called Papayati. Papayati? Yeah. Okay. He's a boxer in G uh, Wisdom Boxing Jimmy. 
So my father took me to that man. He introduced me to the man that uh, um, his son, um, I want to uh, start learning boxing. And so the man brought me to uh, Kuchasari. Uh, I took it from there. Okay, so can we say that um, Papayate was the one who formally started training you? As yes, a boxer. yes, yes, he started oh, okay. training me. Okay. But Mike Tyson was um, uh, someone you were looking up to when you were growing up. Yes, 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 that's true. I was looking up to Mike Tyson, but uh, I, I realized that uh, Mike Tyson is a bigger weight. And the skills level that he's using is a bigger weight skills. So I ignore Mike Tyson skills, but I, I am Mike Tyson fan. So I ignore his... Uh, uh, because of his weight, I ignore his uh, skills and I follow uh, Mayweather's Mayweather. uh, skills. Okay. So you took a little bit from Mike Tyson yes. and from Mayweather. Yes. Okay. So um, if you may know, where did you where did you start schooling? Well, I started schooling at uh, la, my my hood called Lantimam. Lantimam yeah. in the Choco community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. What is one of the challenges you faced and how did you overcome it? Well, well the challenges are um, like I said. I did not know what boxing is, so someone introduced me into boxing. I started following uh, Mike Tyson and Mayweather, so I adapt their style, and I also trust myself that uh, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, uh, like, how do I say? You're talented. Uh, not not talented, but like uh, a, ro a rough guy at home. Like I love fighting at home, and so. I took it, uh, the, 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 the um, foundation. Yeah, I took took it from that foundation. That is because I love fighting at home. Let me transfer that into boxing. But I love football. Playing football is the one of most sports that I, I I love. During time that I was in school, I love playing football. But I could not uh, put my passion. Into, bo in, in, yeah, into football. Uh, I always say that there are a lot of challenges when you're coming up as a young boxer. Maybe sometimes um, your, some of the things you need to train with are not available. Sometimes, you know, um, most some boxers we've spoken to tell us that sometimes they had to train on empty stomach. There are a lot of challenges uh, boxers oh in Ghana yeah, go to. Uh, in every sport, there are a lot of challenges like you are, you are asking. Um, I can say that when I start bo uh, uh, trying to uh, Learn boxing. The challenges. Some are. Uh, some are. Uh, my father is there. My mother is there. But it's because uh, they don't know much in boxing and they don't know how it is. It's like they don't want me to do it. From the beginning, my father don't love me going to uh, boxing, and my mother also don't like it because for my mother, I don't know what is boxing, but my father know a little bit about it. And so I have to run from home to stay outside. Outside, not with anyone, my own. Yeah. To become what I want because I, after I've, uh, I think, loved the uh, sports, I really want to do it when my father don't like it. My, from the beginning, my father is like, you. Uh, what is, uh, what's your plan when, when you grow up? What is the work that you would like to do? I did not say anything, but he want me to go and I think uh, should I use repair, uh, fridge mechanic repair and I said no. And so from there I start going to football, football and divert into football to boxing. And, um, it's like one day my father is there and he heard a lot of crowd singing and shouting that I've uh, won a boxing fight. And so I think from there he started loving what I'm doing and he started supporting me. There, that is, it took me to the one called Papayati. He started to also train me small, small at home before uh, uh, taking me to Kuchasari and then I started it from there. Okay, so viewers um, from the horse's own man, Patrick, who loved football, but his daddy wants him to become a fridge mechanic, so he had to get out of the house had to stay on his own with a lot of challenge, how to defend himself. And his father first believed in him when he won his first bout. And yeah. um, can you remember when you won that, that match? What, what exactly, which match was it and where did it happen? Yeah, 
same at uh, it, it happens at uh, same Choco area. Choco area. Uh, it's, it, it's called uh, 24th uh, December boxing. Uh, we do it whenever, whenever it 24th. At I think we did it at uh, Chimwena last stop. Chimwena. There's one man called Alete Shuma. Yeah. I think that area we, we, we did that uh, boxing event at Alete Shuma's area. So does that those kind of 24th match still goes on? Yes, As still time? still goes okay, on. So every every 24th December. So it's been a tradition there. And that's yeah. when you won your first bout yes. and you were introduced to Mr. Yati. Yes. Okay. So um, kicking on from Mr. Yati's end. So what are some of the things you started learning from? Because from there, though you have, you were talented, you were gifted. I, I'm sure you need some sharpening and things. What, what are some of the skills you came to learn from Mr. Yati to add to what you already had? You know, first, from the time I won that, uh, I think community uh, match, uh, 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 fight. Uh, I think going to Papayaki, he also taught me how to stand and throw hands in boxing. I hope you understand me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like, like first, I don't know jabs. how to stand as a boxer and throw hand as a boxer, but he taught me how to stand, go back, go forward, move side and side, dodge, move, sway, do this and that before. Yes, okay. so. so he taught you some of the jabs, yes. when to attack, when to yes. defend yourself, yes. when to... Okay, so he had this and he gave you that shadow where yes. you know when to dodge the punch. Yes. Okay. So he added a bit of technical ability. Yes. Okay. You know, coming to uh, Coach Asari, it's like, uh, I have to start from the beginning again because Papayate is not a boxing coach. He's also a boxer, then times, he's also a boxer. So. For him giving me to uh, Coach Asari, then you are at zero. You have to start learning how to stand, punch, and, and things. So I, I was here, yeah, I think, I, I spent, I think, one and a half year and I started fighting so as one, amateur or so, a boxer. So for one and a half years, we were still in a training. Yeah. And how was it like? Because back then you were a community champion. Yeah, um, you know, like, like you were asking, uh, boxing, you need to learn more. And here, the coach here, I think, he always teaches like we are in school. And so, I don't know if you have come here, why we are in serious uh, training, our preparation for, you see that uh, the coach in uh, boxing school, so we, we call it uh, comeback school. You see every every boxer learning something or every boxer with his opponent trying to do something. And so I think for me coming here starting from zero again, it's like I'm in school trying to learn what I want to uh, what I want to be or what where I want to go or what I want to do. And so I did not see it like or oh, why me I'm 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 already uh, a, champ a community champion or a fight already so let me start it from there no i just uh, i just I, I think i was calm and i just follow what the coach is trying to teach and i think i i, I took it so what you are saying is to be a professional boxer humility is very key sure yeah. and when when was your first bout as an amateur after yeah. one you said you spent one year in training so when yeah. was your first bout at, 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 was at a, yeah, and was where was call. it i think there was a call and uh, uh, there was a call from kucha sorry that there will be a, uh, an event at we call uh, a place at uh, lighthouse okay. there's a place there called uh, city engineers i think they call us for, to come and uh, fight uh, in the, um, Novice boxing. Yeah. Novice means those who haven't been no in the ring. Those who haven't been in the ring before. And so I was part of um, the, 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 the boxers who were called to go and participate on uh, on, on that day. Okay. And, and how was how was the feeling like? Because that was your first amateur fight. How was the feeling like? And how were you able to you know keep your calm? Uh, you know, like I said, we all, we always learn. We always learn like we are in school, so 
the day that I was called, I was I was very happy because I want to be in the ring to fight so that uh, my chopper people will see that yes, I'm really determined in what I have put myself into. So I was very happy on that day, and what I was what I was determined is I have to win every fight that comes my way so that uh, a lot of uh, uh, the head coaches and I think uh, uh, the, instructors. The, the instructors and everybody I want like, you know I want to do something that everybody will see that yes this guy deserves to be in a, a position like this or a position like that so I was very happy on, on that day when I heard that I would be going to fight I guess you won your bout today. Yes, I think so I fought uh, uh, four or something, three. I think I won all. Okay, so he was very proud of you, yeah. and that's when he started putting pressure on you yeah. now to transit you from yeah. the amateur boxing into more professional boxing. Oh, I was in. I, I think I was called into the national team too, national black bombers. Okay. I was called into the black bombers team. I have. I, I trained with them. I even uh, went to camp. Uh, at Winneba with them, but I did not get the chance to travel with them. So, so how did you take it? How do you take it as a boxer who has done so well for himself, won three bouts in a day, and getting your first opportunity to join the Black Bombers, and you and you were not selected? How did you feel and go around it? You know, I was happy, and I just don't. Uh, it's not only three fights that I, I, I fought in amateur. I think I have over. Uh, 30, 40 fights in amateur oh, yeah. before before uh, coming to professional. Do you still feel oh, proud that at least you were selected? Yes, I was proud, but you know, it's work that you are going to learn. It's not easy. It's not easy at uh, Black Bombers team. It is not easy there. The training is not like joking things that you will be there and you will feel happy because you are always on fire. So it is not easy at uh, the black bombers or with the black bombers. It is not easy. So since you didn't make the squad, when you came back, what did you do, or how did you take it? What was the reaction when you came back to come? When you came back to? Oh, I was okay. The, the coach called me and said, uh, <clears throat> "It's boxing, and we don't fight. We don't only fight at amateur." We also, we, I, if I'm amateur, don't favor me. I can, I can go to professional and continue it from there. So, uh, first, I was not happy that uh, the coach is saying such a, a thing to me, but I accept it and follow what he is trying to see or what he's trying to do. And so, I think I took it from there, 2000, from 2006. Okay, so you became a, a professional. professional my first fight was 2000. 2006. After thinking through, what made you now accept that? Okay, let me get to the professional level. Is it because of your skill, or you felt um, your coach knows what he's saying, so you wanted to give it a chance? Yeah, what I what I thought is that he knows the he, he knows much in the sports than me, and uh, then times he has traveled a lot before me coming into the boxing, and so I was at home and. Uh, I think one of my my friend was I stopped uh, coming to train because it's like wow what is going on I want to be in the national team travel with the team and for people to see that what I put myself into is really going on well with me but not knowing I was I was called but I did not travel and so uh, I was sitting down thinking about it discussing it with a, a friend and. I think that a friend told me that Charlie professional also is good. You can get dollars and things, and it's like we are discussing how, uh, how uh, this thing, uh, the career will still uh, go on. And so the friend told me that Charlie, let's let's go to professional, and you get a lot of support. And, and I think if God is uh, is at our side, things will change. So let's go to professional. So I accept it and. I started it like the way the coach said. He was this just the first 
session of um, Patrick Amity's interview, like the saying goes, there are no stars without scars. So that's one of the scars of Patrick Aluti, where he was selected to be part of the Black Bombers, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. Let's go for a quick commercial break and let's see how he took it after um, his coach advised him to go to the professional level. What happened when he went to the professional level, how he made it in his first bout and what went on. Welcome back to the Profile Show, and it's still your host, Menema Tebuchi, and my guest here is Patrick Aluti. Um, so, um, Patrick, um, you said your first professional fight was in 2006. Um, if Can you remember who you were fighting with? Yes, yes, I can remember. I think the opponent is called uh, Moses Awin. Moses Awin. Uh, yeah. And how did that fight go? Uh, I, I think that, that fight last had uh, four rounds. Four rounds? The opponent. We were going to uh, six rounds and round four, we were first up. So your first professional fight was a it's knockout. Not. And how was the preparation towards this fight? What, how was, the, you see, this is your first international fight. It's a big platform. Yeah, yeah. So how did you prepare yourself for that fight, mentally, physically? Mm -hmm. How did it go? Yeah, you know, at that time, I always come to the gym. And so I was, uh, I, I was already, I was ready for that fight because, you know, uh, we, we have been training always, learning skills and things always, and so that fight, I that think fight I was 100% fit and I did not feel like going to, or, you know, there are some of the fight that you would be feeling like this fight will be a war, this fight will be a something, but that fight, I took it normal, like I'm going to fight amateur. Let's move from there. So from there, when, when what, did you get your first international fight? I think that was in uh, 2013. 2013, 2013. just 2013. Okay. And, and which, that's, um, the, was it that WBC or the WBO? The WBC. The Silver. WBC Silver. That was your first international yeah. fight. And who was the opponent? It's called uh, Patrick Bulgari. Pa Patrick Bulgari. Yeah. Was the fight in Ghana? No. In Switzerland. In Switzerland. Yeah. So the first international fight was in Switzerland. Yeah. So this time, I'm sure, I guess you moved to Switzerland to train there. Yes, I think, I think uh, we went there for, I think, two weeks or so. Yeah. Before, before, yeah. The time, before the fight. And how was the training there and the training here? No, the training is not different. We, we, take, we take it normal. And we were not given gym. Even they did not give us gym to go and train. So we just find uh, a place at the back of uh, our uh, room and, and started doing some shake-up. Yeah. Okay, so in your first international fight in Switzerland, you were training at the backyard of your room. Wow, wonderful. Um, so to the viewers out there, 
Bratrick Alote's first international fight he had to train at the backyard of his room. And you still went on to win the fight. Yes, I knocked my opponent. And, and knocked your opponent. And yes. which, uh, which round? Six. On the, the same sit round. Yeah. I was was you was the, the, the similarity between you and six? Because your first your first professional bout you knocked him out in the sit round. No, no, the first one was fourth round. On the fourth round. <coughs> going to the fifth round. Yeah. So is it that is it something that um you, you plan to do or it just happens? No. Because looking at your record there are a lot of knockouts in it. You know, we when it comes to uh, wisdom boxing club, we don't go for knockout. We go for win because we are always uh, prepared for twelve runs. Or uh, if the run is six, eight, ten, twelve, we are we are always ready to go. But whenever the knockout comes, we just go. So yeah. that means as you are fighting the opponent, the opponent comes to knock him out. Yes, yes we take yes, it and follow. Yeah. You, you go. Right? So it's something that the coach puts in you to yeah. go to for 12 rounds. Yeah. But when the opportunity presents himself, yeah. you take it. So that was the first W um, CC fight, silver, you won. Yeah. You won that fight in Switzerland. Yeah. So moving from there, how was it like when you came back to Ghana? How was the euphoria? Like the crowd coming to meet you? Because <laughs> you were now winning at that. Or no one came to meet you at the airport. It was just normal. I did not expect crowd on that day. I did not expect anybody to come and like uh, all of the sudden we were at the airport and I saw a lot of crowd coming with uh, buses and cars. I'm sure and, your Choco brothers were there. A lot, a lot of them. And I, I was like, wow. And so I was also happy to see my people coming to uh, Take me home. Yeah. So, um, how was how was the feeling? Did you, did you were you jubilating with them? And um, from there, from the airport, where did you? Because as a young boxer coming up with your first title, I guess um, you had to go and show it to your people in Choco. You had to go and talk to them. You had to go and see the chiefs. How, what what really happened during that time? Yeah, you know, uh, I can say that I don't like jubilating because I, I know myself and I trust myself a lot. So whenever. I want something or uh, uh, like I went to something and bring victory. I don't normally jubilate a lot. I leave the jubilation uh, for my crowd or for my people to jubilate because for me, uh, I think that is my job and I've done mine. So the jubilation go to the crowd. So that means the mentality is that once you win a title, you've done it and you have to move to the next one. That means that you could be there. I'm sure the next day you were even in training to train. Well, I was in training and the coach sat me. He said, no, I should go home and relax. I think one week, one week before uh, come, uh, starting training. So I did it like the coach. So, so. Okay, so when, when was your first title defense? When was, if you can remember, when was your first title defense? You know, first the, the, the BBC server that we are talking about, I took it here. The defense was at Sweden. In Sweden? Okay, yeah. so okay in Sweden. So from Switzerland yeah. to Sweden. Yeah. And, and so I think the defense was outside. Oh, okay. So yeah. the WBC, when, was, when do you remember? Did you take that title to the WBC? I, I, it was 13, 2013. 2013. And 2013, I went and defended. You went to defend it. Then you went next to the WBC. So with the WBO, where was which year was the WBO fight? The, 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 the WBO was in 2018. In 2018, just recently. I, 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 I was in. Uh, I, I went to chase another title at Zambia. Zambia. That which title was that? The WBC, still WBC International. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from so the WBC I Silver, you yeah. wanted to get to the WBC International, International and I lost. In Zambia and you lost. Yeah, okay. And I lost in Zambia. So was that your first fight you lost? Yes. Okay, so how, how was that? It's one of the intriguing parts of the interview. How do you take the, the loss? Because that was your first fight you were losing. And how how did you train to come back? How was the mentality? How did you feel? You know, that, that uh, Zambia fight that I lost was not a loss because uh, if my coach is here, uh, he, he, he will tell you that what I'm saying is true. I was robbed. Yeah, I was robbed at uh, Zambia. I want them to show uh, the video to uh, put the video to YouTube so that a lot of the promoters 
and the matchmakers and the, even the boxing judges will judge if I have lost that fight. But, uh, it's not been uploaded on YouTube. Yeah. But you see, even taking it from that, you were, you were wrong. But how do you take it? Because there are boxers who get to this stage where their first loss, especially when they are wrong, and they come back and um, they are downhearted, they, they don't want to continue with um, their career anymore, they feel um, it's not worth it. How do you take it? Yeah, well, mine is not like that. I, mine, I took mine normal because the coach behind me always have ways that I will put it into your uh, ears so that you, you always feel like uh, you are on top of everyone and so I think from from that fight coming home I was not happy but the coach tapped me and said come on you, you know you and I know everything all of the people there know that what they did was, was not uh, uh, good and so let's take it like that let's go to the, uh, to the drawing board and start uh, something new that we can Continue from there, and so I accept. You see, you took, that means after the loss, you took the words of Coach Asari yes. and you moved on from there. Sure. And so your next title was the WBO. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, no, well, no, no. That, that fight, the, the next fight was, uh, the next title fight was at uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Yeah. And which title was that? Uh, it was, I think, WBO, WBA. WBO, WBA. Yes. In Kazakhstan against. And which against, against Kanat Islam. Kanat Islam. Yes. Okay. And I think, how I think I lost that fight too. You lost that fight too. Yeah. So that means that you had about um did it, how many losses? That's four four. Four losses in all. Yeah, I also lost at US. In US. I have lost at US twice. US and which part of US? Uh, the first was at New York City. New York City. Yeah. The second, the second was, was at California. Oh, okay, so you lost those two big fights. Yeah. Uh, and which titles were those? I think uh, the third loss was at uh, uh, Kazakhstan, the WBU, WBU, two titles. And after all these losses, you didn't give up? No. So what, what motivated you after these four losses not to give up? You know, uh, it's boxing. You know, these, these, these titles are huge titles, who, which um, some people will be like, okay, I got to give myself a break. You know, it's boxing that we are doing. We have lost, draw, and win. And so, if I have paired with someone and we are coming to the room, we are all coming to win. But end of the fight, one will lose, or one, uh, it will be a draw. And so, if the opponent lost, he will not be happy. The same as me. And so, you just tune their mind and go in and do your best. If you want, you go with it. If you lost, you go with it. You draw, you go with it. The 2018 was the day I become the BBO, the BBO super, super. Went out with okay. African champion. Okay. And, and, and I think 2019 was when I went to challenge uh, the, uh, world, uh, the world title, the BBO world title at California. California, okay. So, currently, which title are you aiming at? Because um, we know you are training. And who title are you aiming at as a now? Any of the titles because as a boxer you don't need to focus on IBO, we have I, uh, uh, IBF, WBA, WBO, WBC. And so I'm ready to, to fight with anyone who wants to fight me in any uh, uh, any of the those titles. Divisions. In my division, anyone who, who is ho holding uh, a title. Uh, the title, any of the titles. And he's ready to fight me. Fight me, I'm also ready. Okay. So um, let's talk about a little bit about COVID-19. Um, we know COVID-19 has had a great impact on, on sporting activities. So um, in currently in Ghana, there's a ban or a halt in um, sporting activities in Ghana. How has that had an effect on you personally? And how has that affected the sports too? Yeah, well, this, this COVID has, I think, uh, damaged a lot of sports, not in, only in Ghana here, but the whole lot of uh, countries. And you know, in Ghana here, I think some of the board, uh, uh, borders or uh, countries are, are, are been open their sports to, 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 to participate. But you can see in Ghana here, we have we have not got that, that chance. And 
uh, especially with the boxers, we, we, we can't do any work apart from uh, boxing. And so we are in very tight corner because of this COVID, COVID uh, issue. Okay, and viewers, Patrick Alete is trying to say that they are in very trial times in this um, COVID-19 period and it, boxers cannot do anything apart from boxing. Um, so how are you taking this time? Because most people are saying, some people in the sports are taking this time um, off to rest. Some are also trying to, you know, get on their feet so that they come out. Um, after the post-COVID, they try to come out um, well prepared for any fight. And do you have any fight in, in mind already before the COVID came in? Yes. Uh, I have a fight, uh, I think, uh, in, in, in uh, March. March. Yeah, before this COVID came. And, and you know, we have different sports that uh, they said some are taking this COVID to rest, some also are taking it to do what they want to do. Maybe the side business or something, but you know, with, with the boxers, you can't do anything. Because uh, if you choose boxing, you can't work. If you choose boxing and you are determined to become someone in, in, in boxing sports, you can't uh, attach any work uh, to, to, to boxing. And so, uh, this COVID, as I think, uh, make with the boxers. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. it, it, it will be over soon. Yeah. Definitely, we all pray it's going to be over soon. But what, um, if the viewers may know, what um, match were you um, preparing for in March before the COVID came in? Yeah, I, I, uh, we were trying to uh, um, put a show down. Uh, for uh, I think W W O Global title before this coming. Okay. okay, so there was going to be a W O Global title, and we were preparing for that. Yeah. And I guess we are going for the win because I know your know, mentality is always to go in for the win. Like yes. you said, yes. Uh, you know, I need that title too. I want to see how the, the, that title looks like because uh, I've been uh, I've been hearing Global Global W O B. I have uh, W O. Uh, uh, title, yeah. which is uh, the one that I took, but the global I think is different. That yeah, how that the you have the WBO silver world are with yeah. yeah, and so I want to, I want to have a feel of the yeah, global yeah, one. Hold it and see taste. how the, the, how the, the it's, global it's, title it's like, is. It's, yeah. it's good. Um, so, um, what is what is your prospect? Um, are you aiming up for um, a, a world title? What? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, you know, every boxer needs. To become a world champion. Well, of course, Ghana, Ghana a world, yeah, a world champion. Yeah. And you can see we have we have ten already than other sports uh, and I see and we and we need more. We are determined to bring more. And so uh, for me you can see that I've gone and chased one before and I could not grab it. I want to get another opportunity to grab mine because I want to get uh, a, a world title. I want to grab a world title and so that my name will be written in the uh, uh, book of world champions. So, so what, what's your plan after boxing? Uh, right now that I'm in boxing, I can't say anything, but for my thinking, I, I, I want to be a, a coach after boxing. But you know, sometimes you can say it, but as time goes on, things, things can change. So, so we should give you time to you know, yeah. finish your professional yeah. level yeah. and yeah. Sit, yeah. to think through it. Yeah. But for now, you wish to be a coach after yeah. boxing. Yeah. So what, what are some of the pieces of advice you as someone who has been there before and you are still there? You've held a title before, you've defended your title. What are some of the advice you want to give to the upcoming boxers? Yeah. You know, my little advice uh, for the up upcoming boxers. You know, boxing is a determination work. And if you don't want to do it, don't don't try to put yourself in it because it will take all of your time. And if you don't like, if, if you don't want to put yourself much in it, then don't go and waste your time. And then later you will see that I will get, uh, I've regretted myself being in boxing, and I did not gain anything. There, there is a lot in boxing, and so. Uh, that's what I can say to the youth and also to tell them that boxing 
you need to go to training more than everything. If you don't train, and it's like you'll be at home thinking that when fight comes, you can fight. No. Boxing is a rich job that you can be punched and go off. But you won't come back again. And so those that want to be a boxer or those that want to be in boxing should determine higher and, and keep their focus on it. And I think if God is at their side, they, they, they can make they, they can do it. I'm still in the in, in the uh, sports. I'm not out. Uh, there have been a, a lot of issues, but but I'm I'm back. I'm back. Um, I think if God permit and this COVID is over, I think they will see me back in, in action again. And I promise them that I'll not let let them d down like they know me. But to raise Ghana flag higher than the, uh, than it is. Thanks so much for um, giving us this opportunity, and I think um, we, we've had the best of it, and we hope to meet you again, not as Patrick Aloki, but adding something to your name as a world champion again, Patrick Aloki, the world champion, Patrick Aloki. Thanks so much, and it's a pleasure having this interview with you. Thank you.